Hi everybody, it's Lace, and uh, we've all heard all the hype and talk that's been going on about uh, the new dungeons. Well, while we don't know exactly what it's going to take to uh, for a blueprint of some of the common pieces, we know that the more unique and the spawners are going to be mob drops, we know that you're going to have to build sections and stuff. And, you know, we can speculate that it's probably going to take some granite, possibly some wood. Right now what's going on as of oh, probably R55 and 56 is I've noticed a extreme shortage of wood outside in uh, in any of the player marketplaces, any of the towns. I mean I've scoured pretty much high and low and spent far too much time looking for wood and I've even you know I've got buy orders up in towns and everything else. Um, people are hoarding wood. Or using the wood well probably the big thing that they're using it for is the catapults that they're using to get a uh, producer XP so there's hardly any wood to be found um, even I'm still trying to finish the prices right but I'm having you know I'm having to actually go out and get wood now you can go around to normal scenes like I'm like right here and I'm kind of near twins foothills and that's a pretty good little circuit I can go and and get wood and the reason I'd want to do that in adventure scenes is because when I'm chopping trees I can get the pine resin or the sooty bark and stuff on maple and you need those components to be able to make the uh, more expensive timbers to make uh, uh, bows with a little bit few extra stats and stuff so that's why you do want to still go out and harvest trees to get those components or you're gonna to have to pay a hefty price for the folks that are spending the time to do it but if you're just looking for wood and you don't really care about the other things and like me you can't find it out in the world the place to get it is sieges now I'm standing here now Diamond Fields is a sub POT off of Port Phoenix which is right here and we're in the Elysium area let's see if I can bring up the big world map here might take a second to load Go. loading 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 keep those doggies loading rawhide okay so I'm like over here in the little Elysium area which you know there's a boat to Aerie uh, here and then I can take a boat to Exeter over here um, but I'm standing right here and this is one of the clusters of POTs and the reason I'm pointing this out is when you're looking at the overland map now sub POTs are never under siege but overworld POTs are now when I'm looking at this do you see this little white circle right here that tells me they have devotionals right so that means they could possibly be under siege this one could be under siege I think Jade Valley's over here again I see the little white thing so these are all potential places that can have sieges when I get over here to Phoenix Fields there's no devotionals there so it's never gonna be under siege what's this Sparrowfall no devotionals not gonna be under siege now the reason I'm over here is because I live near here and sieges occur quite frequently over here and I use those for wood um, another place that um, if you go around in the central Brittany area I'm not going to teleport over there or anything but uh, you can also know by just looking for this little indicator of what towns are going to be under siege now depending on their location and the terrain around the area that's going to determine the type of siege these are typically as a forest siege if I go down the road all the way over and then hop over to like Exeter I'm gonna see that it's um, a little bit different terrain and it's gonna be a hill siege now the reason that I'm talking about the types of sieges that, that can pop is for me because of my particular build I'm a melee person and sieges can be very difficult for melee people solo um, and I'm not talking about getting down to the the, the Kabbalist I'm talking about just clearing the engineers and stuff because it's the engineers that are gonna drop you some decent quantities of wood and I seem to find it far faster than just harvesting trees in a circuit again the caveat is that I will not be able to get pine resin city bark uh, maple bark or pine bark I'm, I'm not gonna get those little sub components or the borers and things like that I'm not gonna get that unless I'm actually physically chopping a tree out in the wild but if I'm just looking for wood, raw wood, to make basic furniture, uh, in my case, <laughs> um, then sieges seem to be the best bang for the buck. And the reason I'm isolating the four siege versus the hill siege, and I think there's another one, I think there's another type. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm saying that is because of my build. The hill siege 
tends to have these uh, these uh, walkways, these narrow walkways. So once you go out there, you're like in no man's land, and you don't have retreat points. You don't have as many good cover points. And me, I'm I'm not an uber fighter. Um, you know, I've got some adventure levels under me, but I'm melee. And these, well, these bastards, to put it quite frankly, are all archers. They're all running around. So you're going to need ice field. Just a slow little, it's hard to say that word. Slow though, I'm trying to keep it clean, but it really is infuriating as a melee person. To try to slow them down and uh, keep them from getting behind you because they're going to crit you every freaking time they shoot you in the back. Um, so in order for me as a melee person to do them, I found that I'm fine in the four sieges. It's the hill siege that I just I have no place to run. I don't have any movement. They're con and it's just it's just they're a pain in the ass. Um, and and this is when they made the change where there's no melee folks really hardly in the sieges. They're all archers. They're all trying to get behind you. They're all running around like their hair's on fire. Even and and sometimes that I just have to throw down some fire to make their hair on fire. Um, so. <laughs> Um, depending on your build, you know, your success rate's going to vary. But this is how you can determine on the overland map where sieges can occur. Again, like I said, by the little white thing, you'll know which one. Because there's a nice cluster here, I can pop out here and check up and, and then find sieges to go hit. Um, and, and another cluster, again, is around the central Brittany area. And you can know where they're going to pop like that. Um, and then... You know, you may be fine on hill sieges, and that's going to give you more opportunities. I just, I just don't have good success, and it's not worth the frustration for me personally uh, to do them. So, and also, there's been talk that I guess, uh, I guess they're going to make the sieges optional. That's fine. Um, right now, it's it's my only option to get wood at a reasonable price. I'm not going to play pay jacked up prices when I could go and do them. Um, somebody was asking me how much can you get per hour. Well, the problem is, is, you know, the sieges, they, they go with the alignment. So it depends on what time of day and how the alignments are and this and that and the other as to where they're going to pop and, and things like that. So you can't really say by the hour. Um, you just have to know where there's nice clusters like this of places that can potentially have them and be able to move around and, and check those out. Now, there used to be a place that had like a siege tractor as to where the cobbles were. Uh, I think that's down. Um, so for me, kind of my, my little hack that I do is I put an alt account standing out here and I'm going about and doing my own business or I might be in another area and I just can have them spying and tell me when the siege is. I know not everybody has two accounts, but if you do and you can, you know, play two or you have two PCs or whatever, um, that's one way is just to have somebody spying and then go run in and hop in them. Now, I'm in private mode and, of course, if you're in the open slash, you know, what used to be called multiplayer mode, um, other people could be in there clearing them, but if you're in a private mode, you know that you can go in there and clear these sieges on your own and stuff. Now, when I say clear the sieges, haha, <laughs> this is what I'm doing, and I'm just going to, you know, share it with you. This is how I do it. Again, personally, I'm not Uber, and I'm only talking about the four sieges because, you know, like I said, I've had issues on the hills. I only clear the first two encampments. Um, the third encampment, well, one thing that can happen is if you clear it, then you can have a cobbleist right on your ass right away. And I'm not, they're not going to give me any wood. I have no use for them whatsoever. I only want wood. I want siege engineers. So I only clear the first two encampments, and then I'll move to the next siege. And then I might pop over to multiplayer, because there could be an instance of the siege, not only in my private mode, but in the multiplayer mode. But I'll go ahead and clear them in my private pop over to multiplayer and happen to see if any of them are still up, if nobody's cleared them or they've timed out or whatever. So I can stay in this area and maybe get two to three in. Now each siege that I do, again going back to how many wood per hour do I get, um, well it's random the amount of wood that drops and you get a pretty good amount of uh, scrap wood too from it and then you've also got weapons that you can get for scrap, uh, metal and, and wood. Um, but it seems to be, and I'm only clearing again two camps, because that third camp, like I said, it can get iffy, and plus the way it's laid out just isn't really conducive to my hunting style, so that's why I don't do the third camp. This, again, is all just going to depend on your build, but I'm just telling you how I do it. I can get around 50, uh, sometimes more than 50 pieces of wood, and again, I don't care if it's maple or pine, because I'm using it for furniture and stuff. Uh, you people that are looking for specifics, maybe you can start working out some trades with other folks.
and again, the purpose, the reason we're talking about this is, you know, these dungeons might require wood. We don't know what the blueprints are going to require. We don't know what it's going to take to construct it. They probably don't even know yet because they might not have done the recipes. I don't know. Um, but on the off chance that it also requires wood, and there is a current wood shortage from everybody making tabletop catapults, uh, this is how I'm getting my wood right now. So it's daylight now uh, while I was editing. No seed just popped, so I'm not going to actually go into one and just kind of show you my route. Eh, that's probably boring anyway. You know how to hunt, and you'll be able to know if you can uh, take them or not. Um, so this kind of covers the wood. The next thing to talk about, well, we know that's probably going to definitely take granite to make any of these blueprints. Um, there's a lot of people that when they go in and mine, they just ditch all the granite because, the and there's been posts on the forums about this, the amount of granite to, to make anything in the game is pretty minimal compared to the amount of granite you end up with after doing a mining run. And when I say mining run, I'm talking about probably um, spectral mines and graph gem mines. Those are going to be your best uh, options for granite because they have um, iron and uh, spectral and then copper in the graph. Um, and only iron and copper drop granite. Your gold and silver do not drop granite, thank God, because I just dilute it more. Um, but uh, yeah, those drop the granite. Um, so you're going to want to be hitting those up because I've, I had granite up and I've got a crap ton of granite because I, I just hoard and save everything. And, uh, I had a little shop in Diamond Fields where I had some granite up for sale. Well, people are already starting to hoard granite and the prices are already starting to skyrocket because of folks trying to take advantage of the market and stuff. Um, so you are probably going to have to get in there and haul your own granite. Um, we don't know how many pieces it's going to take. We don't know if it's going to be as bad as the housing where a whole house only takes 50. I don't know. Apparently you're only pouring the footer <laughs> and it's 50 granite. Uh, but I, I expect these uh, dungeons to probably uh, start stripping the market of granite. Now, of course, some of you guys might want to go out there and start buying up all the granite and do like what I've already seen people doing jacked up shit uh, where they're jacking the prices. But in order to uh, get granite on your own, you can get, I don't know, 500 in less than an hour uh, in spectral. I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly what I usually end up coming away with, but quite a bit, probably 500. So it's pretty easy to get um, and stuff. So don't pay jacked up prices. Just go get it on your own. And again, I would recommend probably spectral, definitely for sure. Um, or if you really want copper instead of iron with your granite, then uh, graph gem mines. Uh, Elysium mines great because you got silver and copper in there, and you'll get your granite too if you're trying to get silver uh, with it. Um, those are probably the best three. Uh, but again, if you're really truly looking for granite, I would definitely suggest spectral mines as your go-to point. So. I think in conclusion, um, I just wanted to address the wood shortage and how you can get it on your own. The probably upcoming granite shortage slash jacked up pricing that's going to occur as these dungeons come up. And hopefully these are some good tips for you guys. Um, you probably are better hunters than me and can do the hill sieges and get even more wood than I can. Um, but this is just for me. This is how I do it. And if you're a melee person like me and you find you're having a lot of frustration, uh, ice field, um, even just throwing down like maybe you're you're working on one. Don't let them get behind you. You're going to constantly have to move. Try to keep the archers, you know, in in your frontal vision rather than behind you. Uh, throwing down, um, even if you're a chain wearer, you can get off some fire stuff, um, even with the fizzle and everything. Uh, throw, throw down um, the uh, AOA ring of fire. So you're hunting one and you throw it down away from you and start working on that guy because they're stupid and they'll stand in it until you go and engage them. As soon as you move towards them, they're like, oh, I got to run. I'm an archer. You can't get near me, melee. You know, and then, of course, you can use root. Uh, the root doesn't tend to last that terribly long. I, I just think the ice field works better. And as they're running away from you, make sure that you've worked up your backstab or yeah, I believe it's the backstab ability where you crit more from behind. And just stay on their butt as they're twisting and turning and start smacking. Just keep your auto attack on and smack them from behind. Um, again, if you're an archer or a caster, you're going to probably, you know, be a lot better in sieges than melee persons are. Because you can hit them from a range and you don't have to move around as much to chase them down like we do. Uh, you'll just have to still keep them, you know, make sure they're not getting behind you. Um, 
I can't give you an exact level that you'll be effective in a siege solo, but if, if you're having problems, you know, I, I did a video on alt F group, do a siege group, you know, two man, three man siege group, and you guys are going around and, and stuff, you'll probably have to not turn your auto roll on, because only the person looting will probably get the wood, so you'll have to set your rules accordingly to that, but uh, doing a, you know, two man, three man siege group, you should be fine even at lower levels, and you guys should come away with plenty, plenty good amounts of wood and stuff. So, in conclusion, take care everybody, happy hunting, and be safe.